It's great to see you both again. I uh, took some time and I went back to the lab and I put together a little high level strategy that I'm gonna run you guys through. If you have any questions, feel free to stop me. I'm just gonna run you through all the things that I've seen based on experience, based on what we spoke about last time. This is gonna be focused on marketing. I know last time we spoke a lot about offers and pricing and stuff like that. I know you guys are currently working on that, but what we're gonna focus on is what I call like the front end offer, right? So the back end offer is the business offer, pricing, all that stuff. This is gonna be the front end offer that we use to bring people into the gym and ultimately have that conversation about becoming a client, becoming a customer. So the way that I break down every marketing strategy that I work on is in three buckets owned, earned, and paid. So what that means is that owned is things like your website, your social media profiles, earned is things like influencers posting or, or press coverage, and then paid is gonna be things like advertising. So within that, what I'm able to do is look at kind of the broad scope of everything that may or may not work and then kind of layer on your budget on top of it to be able to figure out what we can actually do realistically. Like I'm not gonna sit here and tell you to go uh, and you know, do like a bunch of PR, go out and pay a bunch of influencers because the price is not gonna return on, on what it is, right? So quickly what I'm going to do is just kind of run you through each one of those buckets, what I have in mind for you. And again, these are stripped down, simple, knowing what I know about you and the business, things that you can actually execute without having to go out and you know bring in a new hire, potentially bring in a very expensive agency. So starting with the own channels, there's three social media platforms that I think you would really benefit from. First and foremost, Instagram. You know, you guys, I think, already do a good job on Instagram. I think, if anything, maybe posting more once a day or, you know, three times per week, figuring out what that content strategy looks like, which I think you know. Lou, yeah. I think you know exactly what to post. It's just a matter of probably bandwidth in terms of getting more content up and getting it more consistent, yeah. right? Um, specifically within that too is and when we'll talk about more of the earned stuff is getting other people to talk about the business customers influencers stuff like that i have a few strategies that i think we can deploy that will really help because at the end of the day your profile is only communicating to the people that follow you the key is getting other people to talk about you too which will also feed into the advertising which we'll talk about in the paid section um, so TikTok is another one TikTok is one that i really like just because of the ability to get a lot of organic reach right instagram's reach um, there's actually a study that I saw that shows the basically percentage of your profile that actually content gets shown to. Instagram is 5%. 5% of people that follow you actually get your content. That can be raised a little bit if you have a very engaging profile, but Instagram is just like Facebook. It's, it's a paid platform, right? You basically have to pay to play to really get everyone to see your content. So again, Instagram is kind of the central point because people use it so much, especially the people that come in here, they're posting their stories. It's a really, honestly, the best way to get more customers is getting your people activated in here to post and bring other people in and bring friends and et cetera. But TikTok presents a very interesting opportunity because 118% of your follower base will actually get it. And that's because of the way that TikTok operates. The algorithm is completely different. The challenge is, is that it's very high level. It's much more viral, if you will. It's not as localized as Instagram is, but you have the opportunity now to build a presence there, to build a following. And then as it grows and matures, you know, I fully believe that TikTok in three years will be what Instagram is five years ago. You know, so it's gonna be a very big platform, very powerful platform. The nuances there in terms of content is very different. We can talk some specific TikTok strategies if you guys feel like you can deploy it, but it's obviously all video based. Um, you know, I think you can do a lot of tutorials. I think you can do a lot of kind of funny stuff that you guys do well and, and have some success there. Uh, the final one would be YouTube. That one's kind of like pie in the sky. YouTube is really good for like how to tutorials. Um, it's a really good way to build and posture the brand in a way that I know you want to in terms of demonstrating your, your skill set as more of just kind of a gym that people come in and work out, but the science behind it, the mentality behind it, the how to tutorials for how to do all that type of stuff. Um, you know, you being what you can do with video, I think that's a, a really good opportunity for you to build out that over the long term as well, especially if you want to go online, right? So basically what you, with these platforms, it's an investment in the future of what you see the business, right? YouTube offers a tremendous opportunity to get in front of the entire world, as does TikTok. And then when you're fully digital or when you have that digital platform built out, then you've got a built an audience to sell against, right? So Instagram is going to be much better for localized marketing, but TikTok and YouTube will be much better for digital-based content that, you know, in the next 12, 24 months when you launch this new program, it'll really help you out there. So the other two own channels are gonna be uh, email and phone, right? So I don't think you need to go crazy with email marketing. I think that you reserve your email announcements for, um, you know, 
brand launches, featuring people in the community, featuring results. And I know you guys do that, and I know you've been more active with email. Um, but I don't think, again, I don't think you have to go crazy. I think it's email is much more of a communication platform on the sales side when they come in and making sure that you're communicating with them, bringing them back in, and just communicating with them there via email. So I don't think you have to build a crazy email platform. I think emails in this space a little bit overrated. I don't see you guys really building an email list and converting them like I do in some of my businesses. Um, but, uh, and then like events and stuff like that, whenever you're promoting events, just to customers and, and stuff like that. The other one is phone. Um, and again, this is much less of a marketing, more of a sales play. We spoke a little bit in the first meeting about potentially bringing in a full-time salesperson or getting somebody dedicated to sales. They basically own the phones, right? In, in terms of actually calling people and actually texting people. Again, text message, just like email, we don't need to go crazy texting people updates and stuff like that. It's a little bit intrusive. I don't think it really fits in what you guys are trying to do here unless you're sending out a big announcement like an event or like a discount or something like that, then you've got the text message list to fall back on as well. But again, I, I see that much more as owned by the salesperson, whoever's owning the CRM, really using text message and phone as a communication tool to make sure that they're showing up for consultations. Because when we start talking about internet leads and getting more aggressive with paid traffic, 50% of them tend to just go out the door because they see a good ad, they're like, oh, this is cool. And then they're like, oh shit, two days later, I actually gotta show up for the consultation. If you don't pressure them to come in or not pressure them, if you don't keep them accountable for coming in, then they're not going to come in. So that's why I think having somebody, you know, it doesn't have to be a dedicated salesperson per se, but somebody who owns the lead, somebody who owns that and is responsible for them to get to come in. You can try and automate it with text messages, but like it's a little bit impersonal, you know, and I just think that like having somebody who's like, hey, Joa, like you signed up for a marketing consult or you signed up for our, our, our in-body consultation. I'm super excited. I'm excited to meet you. Um, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear about your goals. You can just text me. This is my personal phone number. I'm here for you. Just wanted to make sure that you're coming in at 2 p.m. on Tuesday for your consultation. You know, like that level of communication, I'm texting them on the same day, especially here in the city, people are flakes. And if you let them go, then, then they'll just fly off into the wind. So that's really it in terms of own channels. Like I, I said, I didn't want to overload you with stuff. I wanted to keep this to a place where with the resources that you have now, you can execute that, right? So like Instagram, again, you already know that's a focal point just getting as active there as possible, potentially repurposing some of that content for TikTok. And then again, you've already got a lot of these workout videos built out that you could potentially put on YouTube, maybe just with some narration and kind of coaching on top of it. You know, stuff like that, I think would be very effective. Email and phone, collecting them as when they come in as marketing leads. And then again, using that as much more of a sales tool to bring people in, keep them accountable, as opposed to just blasting them with updates for stuff that they don't want to hear.